Ti ure ra flavu. Tena koe Mr. Speaker, kia ora tata gatoi te nei ai ai. Mr. Speaker, if you were to attend any significant Māori hui uh, these days, uh, you're likely to hear waiata songs uh, which connect directly to the trenches of Passchendaele and, and the song. The unofficial national anthem, Pō Kare Kare Ana, was popular with Māori soldiers preparing to go to war in 1915. Te Ope Tuatahi was popular in 1916, a recruiting song crafted by Sir Apirana Ngata and Praere Tō Moana. Irungo Ngāpuke was sung in September 1915 to farewell the second Māori contingent. Hoia Rā Te Wakanei derives from a call for financial support for men in the trenches in France in 1917. E Parira was a song for Māori soldiers lost in battle during World War I. So I remember all of these songs. Uh, we learnt them as a part of our kapahaka at school at, uh, at St Stephen's. They were songs that we learned, maybe not necessarily recognising the significance of these particular songs and their message. So the fact that these waiata, amongst many, many others, are still part of our lives, in effect means that the history and tragedies experienced in World War I live on in the hearts and the memories of this generation. Other speakers have spoken of the loss. I want to focus instead, Mr Speaker, on the, the decimation of Whakapapa Māori, experienced during World War I. So the first Māori contingent, the Hoko Whitua II, of which there is a kapahaka group named after, sailed from Aotearoa in February 1915 and fought as, a, a combat, and fought as combat engineers and snipers in Gallipoli. In all, 477 men marched in, only 134 marched out. More than 2,000 Māori served in the Pioneer Battalion, a native contingent. So I note the word native was, was not dropped from official use until 1947. There was an, an interesting context to Māori participation in World War I too. Promoters of imperial policy opposed the idea of natives fighting in a war amongst Europeans, fearing that they might seek equal treatment with European um, soldiers, or worse still, might, take, uh, might turn on their colonial masters. Indeed, imperial policy had officially excluded Māori from fighting in South Africa. But, says some Māori leaders, such as Te Tāpirana saw participation in war as the price of citizenship. It was a view that involvement from Māori would strengthen the ability of other New Zealanders to accord tangata whenua uh, equal status with non-Māori. Many years later, at the onset of the Second World War, Sāpirana Ngata explained this view in the booklet uh, he wrote in 1943 entitled The Price of Citizenship, which asks, quote, whether the civilians of New Zealand, ma men and women, fully realise the implications of the joint participation of Pākehā and Māori in this last demonstration of the highest citizenship, end of quote. So, and so it was that perhaps for the first time some New Zealanders went to Gallipoli in France to find out about their own indigenous peoples, the first peoples of the land. The four members of parliament at the time were united in their support for, the, for Māori participation in war. Indeed, the MP for Northern Māori, Te Rangihiroa, led the charge literally and sailed with the first contingent in February 1915. In that recruitment, Wyatt I mentioned earlier, sir, Ngata singled out recruits from Te Aroa, my area, Te Aitanga Mahiki, Te Aitanga Hauiti, Ngāti Pro, Ngāti Kahununu, as stepping up for the obligations and ideals of patriotic service. His waiata, in fact, names these tribes as an expression of honour. Mr Speaker, it's important to note that there was also considerable opposition from Māori. While some supported the approach and rushed in to join up, others did not see the value of fighting for the British Crown, which had done so much harm to whānau, hapū and iwi throughout the 19th century. And so, when compulsory uh, conscription of Māori was introduced in the Military Service Act 1917, those Māori who had had land confiscated uh, for being uh, deemed to be in rebellion against the British Crown mounted a campaign of resistance. The Kingitanga leader, Te Puea, Te Puea Herangi was notable in her courage and determination to support the men who resisted conscription. 
She openly questioned why Māori should fight an, for an empire that had, from within, uh, from living, within living memory, invaded and occupied their lands. If the land that had been confiscated in the 1860s had been returned, then perhaps Waikato may well have reconsidered their position. So the Māori king at the time, Te Rata, also adopted the position that it was a matter of individual choice and no one should be forced to serve. Many of the men who, re who refused to serve were imprisoned for refusing to serve. Some, were refused, uh, re some who refused to wear the army uniform were subjected to severe military punishments, being fed only bread and water and provided with minimal bedding. The impos imposition of conscription had long-lasting effects on the people of Waikato, and it is important that we also remember that history as we acknowledge the onset of World War I today. Finally, Mr Speaker, when the Māori contingent returned in March 1919, they received a rousing welcome from, uh, with parades, receptions throughout the country. A Māori pioneer rugby team even toured the country for a series of provincial games. They are indeed many faces to war and many experiences that have followed us throughout this century. So the native contingent suffered hev heavily in France and by, the early 19, by early 1919, the Māori reinforcements were being supplemented by our brothers from Māo Te Mōna Nui Kiwa, the Pacific, particularly Nui, Samoa, Rarotonga and Tonga. Today, sir, we remember the courage and the sacrifices of those who occupied, who occupied the ranks of the mighty Te Hoko Whitua too. Remem we, we remember those who were evacuated from Gallipoli and survived physically, but, sir, they bore the scars of psychological warfare for the rest of their time on this earth. We remember the whānau who supported their, fa their families, their fathers, their husbands, brothers, as they wrestled with the demons and their memories of devastation in the trenches, many of them turning to alcohol uh, as a medicine to try to help them forget, a coping mechanism that would have disastrous effects. We remember the sheer determination of those who constructed the trenches, earning them the name of the diggers, the expertise and the genius evident in the military architecture they created. We remember the whānau who, have depri who were deprived of their men, either on the battlefields or imprisoned through the policy of compulsory conscription and the suffering of family members who became casualties of that spirit. I tēnei wā e koro mai te pō. Takotomai, takotomai, takotomai. Ko koutou i tai ki te muro te ahi. Ko koutou rā i kite i ngā wau e tango tēnei me o te pakanga. Ka reno ki oti noa te wāhi o tēnei me o te pakanga. Ko te pakanga, kai tēnei wā, kai tēnei whakatipuranga. Engari, ko koutou tērā i whakaritea mai ai te wāhi kia tau mai te rangi Māori e ki tēnei whenua. A hakoa ngā wau a tanga kua pā, kua i pā atu kia koutou. E kore koutou e ware ware tia mo te āhua tango tau koutou tū ki mua te aroro o te huariri. Mo te aha, mo te pae ngō tēnei whakatipuranga. Koutou i te pō. E moi, e moi, e moi. Mr Speaker. Honourable Peter Dunn. Mr Speaker, when this raw, young, enthusiastic, but naive country 